notion and documentation of computer evidence, which can be used by the court of law. It is a sign for finding evidence from digital media such as computer, mobile phone, server, or network. It provides the forensic tools with the best techniques for those who solve complicated digital privacy cases. And today's webinar is all about that. To commence the session, I request Namaste and good morning all of you. It gives me immense pleasure to be here this morning and that too for a fantastic topic. Forensic itself is an interesting one and digital forensic. I am also eagerly waiting to hear to um, uh, see A.K. Ganesh become a CSEM in the trainer. Sir, welcome, sir. Amit, your busy schedule, you are uh, really concerned about the uh, topic and you readily accepted our invite. Thanks on behalf of the college. I deem it a great pleasure to uh, welcome you, sir, for this program. And definitely, please find some time to uh, come to our campus when things become all right. I welcome you on behalf of our management. And I welcome our uh, General Secretary and Correspondent, Sandar Manjit Singh Nayarji. Our principal is dynamic principal, Dr. N.V. Raghunathan. Right away, he has a meeting. He is uh, not available right now. But uh, his uh, thought is also to invite you to the campus, sir. Please do come. And all the deans, heads of departments, a special mention about the head of the department of BSC IT. Uh, he is one person who is very uh, All the time, thinking about what to be given to the student to enhance their knowledge. Congratulations, Dr. Vanati and the vibrant team. They will be most turn and turn. During this pandemic, she was helpful for many people, many um, teachers uh, in developing their um, education uh, content. And uh, is ready. Whenever we ask for any help, she will be the first person to run. So thank you, Vanati. Such thank a you. bright team and uh, very vibrant leader. I congratulate you for this program, for um, organizing this program. Forensic has always been a very interesting topic. Now we are uh, eagerly waiting to hear uh, Mr. Ganesan to share his knowledge on digital forensic. With these few words, I congratulate all the students who have enrolled for this program because at the end of the program definitely your knowledge will be enhanced and I am sure that this will give you a different way of uh, thinking and uh, you will start um, noting down each and everything you can this uh, attention to detail has to be there for forensic so when a student learns it it is also going to be helpful in their life Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for uh, accepting our invite. Again, I'm making it, sir. Please do come to our campus whenever uh, things get all right. We'll be very happy and uh, um, very grateful to you uh, if you accept our invitation, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Now, I now request Dean Academic Dr. Savitri Mom to address the participants. Over to Mom. So, thank you so much for accepting our invitation. It's a pleasure and what I am simply telling you. At the moment, the market has been connected with something digital. I said two things which are important. Which the whole world seems to be interested in right now is this. We heard of things happening in the world. We've only seen in the movies. But when it happens in real life, you really think that people should be ready for that. And uh, Dr. Panate always has been telling me information about blockchain and uh, what is happening in artificial intelligence, how data is helping, all these things. And this really, I think, hits the nail on the head. And uh, congratulations, Vanati ma'am, for this wonderful initiative. And uh, welcome, sir. I just read up this small, uh, what shall I say, a small kind of uh, note 
uh, it's a digital forensic system process of identifying, preserving, analyzing, and documenting the digital evidence. Earlier, people used to say that uh, whatever is talked on, uh, you know, present on WhatsApp or any of the mediums is not accepted, or any anything which is done, like you know, hackers can hack into a system. We used to see that only in movies. When you see people, uh, you know, being literally taken for a ride. For instance, people say you get a call and uh, they say we are calling from this bank. So people don't always stop and think uh, whether they're really calling from a bank or they're calling from a service provider. They ask for details. They say this is your uh, uh, date of birth. People say yes. Then they or they give a wrong date of birth. And then these people correct it. So things like this, and then they say, you know, your account, if you don't uh, identify or uh, re-enter this, your account will be blocked. So in a panic mode, people uh, start looking at what is happening, and then they say, no, no, you will get a, an SMS, and then you will get a password, you tell that to me, I'll call you in five minutes. By the time these people realize that they have been looking, the money is already gone, or all the personal information is already gone. To get to the bottom of this and try to help people out, like lay people like us, I think digital forensics would definitely help. And I think anybody who is interested in digital learning would make a fantastic uh, expert in this. Another reason that I'm interested in forensics is uh, when I did my PhD, maybe two decades back or something more than that, uh, my area was up about the detective. So crime, uh, things like hacking and forensics has always been something of interest to me. So thank you once again. I hope you have a Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, ma thank you so much. Now I would uh, request our uh, Dean IT ma'am to say a few words. A very good morning to everyone. I think it's a very interesting topic of digital forensics. As the digital transformation of the data is increasing, it is extremely important to know about the electronic data. I'm hopeful that the resource person will elaborate these technologies and, uh, and also I would uh, be grateful if the resource person can explain the job opportunities and this technology. I would like to place and record my heartfelt congratulations to Dr. Vanakuma uh, Head and the staff members of the BSEIT for arranging such interesting topic, which is the most demanding aspect of industry. We are uh, uh, eagerly waiting to hear from you, sir, and my best wishes to the party. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. We are so eager for the session to comment. Before getting into session, it is mandatory to know about the special guest of today's webinar. I now request Dr. Subha Sandrabhu, sir, to introduce the resource person to everyone. Over to sir. Okay. Uh, good morning, sir. Good morning to one and all. Join with us for this wonderful session. It is a moment of extreme pleasure about introducing guest presenter. As a chartered accountant, he is having 25 plus years of uh, experience, working experience in various uh, large uh, multinational companies and and one thing I want to note out about him, he's also having, he's also have teaching experiences and coaching students on selective basis for professional exams and he's a wide knowledge in functional and computer skills. And then one thing I want to note especially, uh, he's a he is expertised in forensic audit and fraud detection. Uh, now we will have a interaction session uh, with sir on digital forensics. Webinar on digital forensics. Sir, let us start our presentation. <laughs> Thank you, sir. It was a nice introduction. Hello. Okay, both. Some interruption is there. Sorry. Yes. Sir, you can start your presentation. Okay. Ah. Good morning to all of you. And uh, thank you, Rajesh, uh, for the kind introduction. And uh, yes, let me start off saying that uh, 
it has been a great pleasure for me to be here today. Uh, I thank the management of Guru Nanak College, the correspondent, Mr. Manjit Singh Nayar, the principal, Raghunathan, the vice principal, dean academics, and uh, a special thank to Dr. Vanati. Uh, basically, she has been the root cause of me being here today for all of you. And uh, just to give a small distinct, Guru Nanak College is not uh, sort of uh, new to me. A couple of years back, I was part of, as an industrial representative, part of a team which decided the syllabus for the BCom IT course. So I've uh, already been there to Guru Nanak College. And, uh, and when Dr. Vanati asked me, I thought it was a great opportunity to form, share my knowledge. A lot of people might just keep thinking, what a chartered accountant is to do with digital. Most things starts off with that. Uh, just to say, I have my interest always goes in certain unique or niche fields, especially in my free time. Most of, uh, almost nobody, even Dr. Vanati doesn't know, I have an advanced diploma in multimedia. And uh, during the 2010s, 13s, when there are a lot of financial frauds, etc., the forensic audit uh, terminology started getting into it, especially after a lot of companies collapsed in the US. So when I had a choice to or an opportunity to get to know what is forensic, especially in accounting field. I grabbed, joined it immediately. One of the earliest courses conducted by the Institute of Chartered Accountants, I joined. And uh, part of that course brought me into the digital forensics part. Since most of even the today accounting is done through the digital, digital forensics became a very, very, very important topic in those seminars also. So that is where my knowledge on digital forensics actually came into picture. Uh, I'll just start my presentation now. Uh, and we'll just move on as it goes on. OK. As uh, most of you have just said, digital forensics is a very vast topic, because the way the digitalization of the world is growing is tremendous. Each day, some new things have been invented or uh, new software is being developed. And as it always goes, whenever something new comes in, there are persons to counter it, taking the negative side of those softwares to gain extra money. And uh, some of you might be thinking, what a chartered accountant is going to teach us in IT programming. At the outset, let me make it clear. My aim is not to teach you programming or software here. The, my aim basically of this seminar is to give the students and the participants uh, just a taste of the knowledge on this exciting field of forensics, especially computer forensics. Computer forensics is itself in a very large course. And uh, given the paucity of time of one hour, uh, my goal, I will restrict it to just give you the basic idea or foundation or the tip of the iceberg so that it might interest some of the students you can, you can even take it as a career opportunity, especially most of you are in the IT sector, to go into the, say, the specialized field, and you can even make a very big career. career. See, the digital forensics, especially, has grown a long way in the Western countries, especially the US, and it's just catching up in India. But as India is, the, say, the hub of your software technologies in the world, I think so. Uh, there's a lot of potential scopes for all IT students or IT professionals in India to get into this very, very niche field. A very few persons are there at present. Possibly a lot of future scope is there. Uh, just to take you through what I present, decided to uh, just share my knowledge is, I'll just start off with what is basic forensics, digital forensics, some type of digital frauds or digital crimes with forensics, the measures and processes, what we do, how we how we are supposed to collect digital evidences on certain areas, how some basic analysis is done. I'll just give you share you some of the softwares also which are used to do this analysis or collection. Then go into mobile forensics as now mobile standard, mobile phones, especially the smartphones, is almost equal to a computer on your hand. So those things and just share with you come uh, some of the say a little interesting uh, digital crimes how it has been done and uh, overall say a uh, bird's eye view of the legal framework of the 
uh, Indian uh, scenario before we close. At the end, I might be willing to take a couple of questions. Whatever I can answer, I will do it readily. If not, I will just answer them through your colleges by mail. Okay? I will share my contact details at the end of this. Okay. To just start off with forensics. A uh, lot of people in a uh, lot of people would best, uh, especially in the context of say forensics is basically taking finger, fingerprints at the side, crime scenes, etc. The basic word forensics comes from the Latin word open in court or in public. The main re meaning, especially when it comes into the realistic forensic sciences, what is the evidence which a person can collect? To solve a crime and that evidence has to be accepted in a court of law so only those evidences which can be corroborated and put into a system where the legal paternity accepts it as evidence is basically what are the uh, evidence which a forensic audit, uh, person has to collect a normal forensics if you see there are various branches of normal forensics today right from your biology, chemistry, physics, DNA, fingerprinting, DNA analysis, drug analysis, even anatomy, post-mortem sort of autopsies, where forensics plays a very, very big role in solving a lot of crimes. Because on the face of it, a crime scene might not have all your evidences. And when persons start looking deeper and deeper into the system, you will start getting in more and more evidences which are not on the face up, uh, be visible to you, but a forensic uh, expert will be able to bring out these evidences and they will be able to produce it in a legally admissible procedure to solve crimes and bring people to justice. This per se is forensics in general. Now coming to the topic of the day, digital forensics. Digital forensics, as most of you have said, digitalization of the world is becoming so huge that nothing is no manual. Even your basic, even uh, your right, starting from your, uh, say, your mobile phones, your TVs, most of it have uh, embedded software coming in somewhere else so that they also start tracking what is exactly happening. Say an automobile car, most of our cars has an inbuilt system, automated system. And nowadays, people, even the manufacturers, are able to pick out data online from what your car generates, how long your car has been running, whether some parts are getting damaged, whether it needs a service or repairs. These are the things which are being going. If you go into the most advanced countries, even your domestic appliances, people have started using digital technologies to track the usage of this. But uh, coming into digital forensics, there are a lot of ways people nowadays are using digital to create, I mean, commit crimes in various forms. And digital forensics is a branch of that forensic science where we start collecting details from the computer or any digital medium and produce that, analyze that, and produce reports so that the legal system takes it as an evidence and helps to solve the crime and bring the persons to justice. Digital forensics in normally is in colloquial terms is also called computer forensics. Okay. In the words of Rodney McNish, forensic computing is the process of identifying, preserving, analyzing, and presenting the digital evidence in a manner that is legally acceptable. This is basically what I have been telling. You have to collect it, preserve, analyze, and present. We'll go into each of this later in the course of this seminar. And the goal of forensic science is, is not like most of you see in a cinema or a serial, just to be there and do some gimmicks. The goal is basically to take these digital artifacts and convert it into a evidence which can be legally acceptable. The evidence basically should be what is the information available on the digital artifact or what are the current situation which has brought to it, sort of a tracking of what has happened in the digital form. Just being 
understanding just the basics of what digital forensics is let us just see what digital crimes are or how it is done and how it relates to forensics unless we know what the crime legally is we cannot say what evidence we need to collect so yes most of you are saying the digital space has grown rapidly in the world it's growing day by day and there are since this digitalization has brought in a lot of improvements to the society productivity say efficiency development growth are all the outcomes of this digitalization especially in the current scenario but there are persons who use these things to even commit crimes there's always a positive or negative to any sort of a activity and since most of the activities nowadays are taking digitally a lot of people are also using the same platform to commit crimes as some of them i just mentioned earlier digital crimes especially the high profile cases are like say hacking copying terrorism ranking frauds it goes on and on and on but uh, i just like to pause here from the generic and just like to say what we considered anything as a digital crime digital crime basically is altering destroying suppressing stealing output usually to conceal an authorized transaction copying or transmitting or deleting stored data in an unauthorized way altering or misusing existing systems tools softwares or writing codes for fraudulent purpose and may also include common uh, digital crimes like bank fraud identity theft extortion theft of classified information these are some of the major types of what we consider a digital crime if you see it sorts of uh, encompasses almost all of the activities like say even author i mean altering uh, data you if you even suppress a data say hide your data in somewhere else or conceal a transaction so that other persons or persons might not know transmit or destroy data in an unauthorized way if you are not authorized you are not allowed to copy or transmit then misusing any of the systems so that you get a benefit or, or you create a crime you misuse a software you misuse uh, any existing tools these are all what we consider as digital crimes the governments and enterprises especially much more in the western uh, countries now comes to also in india are spending huge amounts millions of dollars every year to protect infrastructure their uh, especially the digital infrastructure their networks they are building redundancies they are building firewalls uh, intrusion detection system leak prevention system everything is been put to place even a uh, lot of awareness programs are ro rolled out as your madam earlier said people are unaware that if, if somebody calls up and asks for a pin or a password it's illegal or they are committing a crime just on panic people just give out so these are things which can be solved by awareness programs there are a lot of awareness programs coming in but as the number of individuals with specialized knowledge in computer increases so do the hacking to uh, tools are uh, the capacity of the hacking tools are growing very very rapidly and most of these hacking tools are relatively used so that even persons with very basic knowledge on computers are able to use it to commit a crime sadly digital crimes are growing and so the role of a forensic investigator is gaining credibility day by day the importance is growing day by day we require a lot of forensic persons to solve crimes especially the digital crimes and uh, just saying what the crime is why do, should we employ a computer forensic persons basically to analyze a computer in a legal case a lawyer or a judge do not have the technical knowledge of what is inside a computer so to solve a computer crime or a forensic uh, or a digital crime you need experts in the field of digital or it so that they will be able to go into the digital artifact find out what is there how it has happened and then produce it to the court in a much more easier manner to 
so that the persons in the judicial system are able to understand it and then able to conclude or solve a crime that is the almost main important goal of computer forensics to solve legal crimes which are committed digitally the other aspects for it is basically to recover data in the event of a hardware or a software failure to analyze a computer system after a break in so if somebody has hacked in what has happened to your computer what was the purpose of the hacking as that damage any of your system procedure as thus taken out any of your information or even sometimes money these are uh, say the computer forensics are also used to gather evidences against an employee of organization if empl uh, uh, employer or the company feels that that uh, one of its employees are doing any mischief during using the computer systems then they can use computer forensics to track what those persons are doing and even gather evidence against them uh nowadays as i said when the number of crimes or the soft class or hacking gets improved so does the counter measures also needs to be taken place so that those can be solved at the earliest so this is also used to uh, gain information how the systems is used the purpose how to debug it and all those things so that the and do a reverse engineering so that these crimes can be stopped at the earliest point i can't say it will be stopped forever it can be stopped to an extent at the earliest point where it is possible and as i told you the other basic reasons which is the most common reasons people will look at say a banking fraud a debit card fraud a insurance fraud embezzlement it rights or trade uh, uh, thefts then unlawful access into a company data see nowadays information is the king and when a person has your information he can control whatever you do so if a person of a competitive company and hacks into another competitor and gets the, any data of that company then he can use it to improve his company legally then one of the major problems is cyber terrorism which is basically going into the field of the domain of the government and email email harassment email harassment is one of the most common uh, sort of uh, problems uh, people face on a day to day basis you get threatening emails your emails can be even hacked um, persons can send uh, unwanted mails into your mail or using your mail to somebody else or most of your contacts so these are some things Where a computer forensic persons can get into it, find out the source or root of the problem, and try to solve it. Having just uh, done, uh, seen what basically the reasons are, I'll just go through in a very very brief. What are the measures, especially we will have to take while dealing with a forensic uh, investigation? As I said, the forensic audit or a forensic a digital forensics and anything is to get out evidence which is used in a court of law one of the most critical things which has to be done is to see that the evidences are correct uh, collected accurately and the evidence is not tampered with once when the evidence get tampered even to the slightest extent lawyers can use it to save their clients even though if they have made a mistake so ultimately how it's not only how you collect the evidence but also how you preserve the evidence which goes into seeing how the final evidence is accepted in the court basically the association of chief police officers of british has just given us uh, some minimum basic four principles which any forensic or digital evidence should have when they go and collect the evidence so whenever in the scene of a digital crime the law enforcement agency should not change any data in the computer or any storage media just not just get into the system and search or copy whatever the files are the law enforcement which here means the police are not supposed to go and take any action on the computers they are just supposed to be left intact 
and in a very 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 and these things have to be collected only by a forensic uh, investigator and then based on his principles and processes he will have to work with the data or whatever computers is collected the next principle says in the case of an exceptional circumstance if somebody has to enter or change the data either in the computer or any medium that person has to sort of record why the person first has to be a competent person to do so and he should record what are the changes made by him and he should be able to give evidence again in a court explaining this why he needed to change these data then as i said the audit trail is the i can say the most important piece of work which a person has to do the trail of all the records all those things which have been collected what are all those processes which has been done by an investigator needs to be recorded and that has to be preserved this is one of the main documents which help the digital evidence to be presented in the court and again finally the responsibility always lies with the investigation officer and not it will not bog down to the digital since the police officer cannot who is doing the investigations cannot say i don't know it's digital he is supposed to take these digital evidences from the forensic investigator and he is supposed to finally go to a court of law and try uh, moving forward there are couple of models to track uh, criminal activity we basically classify these two things into pre events and post events pre event is something that you do it before the event happens people can say how we will know when a crime is to be happen but in digital era most of the things happens through the net or through the computer servers etc so there are, and uh, as most of you would know most of your informations uh, travel in packets at at least at the packet level so there are softwares which can be used to map or image the packets and check for using data mining you can use to check for uh, certain patterns or trends in real time example and if you are go into the us system there are systems like the fbi or even the higher uh, investigation agencies they just put in certain keywords using a special software to track the internet chats so whenever there are uh, hits on those particular keywords a red flag is raised so that the person then can and go into the exact details of what that message or a conversation is and then start analyzing and taking action or preventing action a lot of such terrorist activities or narcotics activities are actually prevented using such technologies post event is nothing but you go into the crime scene after the crime is committed use your forensic science collect data and then uh, use it to create evidences uh, the evidence can be computers laptops phones gps devices anything but these are done exactly after the event is happened as a post sort of a post mortem and uh, just take a pause and we'll just go into the what are the processes which has to be followed for a digital forensics the first part i would say is to identify the data a person who before going into an investigation should have a broad idea of what he is going to look for digital data is huge it's a sea of as i can say it's an ocean of data zeros and ones the person who has to go should know what is the crime crime scene what is the exact crime or at least understand what the crime is perpetrated then you should know what he has to look for then the next part is planning it and he has to prepare what are the methods how he is going to collect the evidence what are the processes he is going to follow then you go into the crime scene acquire data processes analysis all those things which i'll come in, in the next couple of slides then the final i say the outcome of a digital investigation is going to be create a report and present this evidence in the court 
collect, as I said, the data identification and project is a planning stage where all the persons or the digital investigator needs to plan what exactly is to do. And let's just go into collecting of a digital evidence, what an investigator or a forensic investigator does. Once he gets into the crime scene, he has to collect data. As I said, he should know what he requires to collect. There are many sorts of uh, digital evidences which are available. It can be a computer, a mobile phone, a digital camera, a CD-ROM, a USB drive, any sort of devices. It can also be a digital instrument, a black box inside an automobile, as I just told you, RIFT tags, web pages. All these things have data in them. And depending on your nature of the crime, the person who has to go into the crime scene should pick up the evidences which is required for this. But before doing any collection of any, uh, evidence, the utmost important thing is the person who is going to collect should either have a consent of the owner of the digital data. And if there is a not consent, the person should uh, get a warrant from a judge. Only after he gets a proper clearance from a legal authority or the consent from the owner, a digital uh, forensic investigator to go and even touch the data or the evidences. Because what happens once you take these things out without the legal clearance or, or the, from authority, then these are not admissible in a court of law. So we ensure that, and in some countries, it's even a crime. Um, sir, sorry for the disturbance. Yeah. Uh, can you put it in a full slideshow, sir? Yeah, sure. Uh. Okay. And uh, once uh, digital data are collected, then they have to see that the data, the special care has to be taken in handling and transporting the digital devices. Normally, for small items, we normally recommend a non static bag because sometimes when you put a digital medium, especially your hard disk, even very close to your speaker of your car. That is a possibility of... Uh, sir, uh, sir, again, sorry for the disturbance. Can you just press it from current slide, sir? Still, we are not able to see the full screen. I am in full screen, ma'am. Just... Uh... Um, can you now see that? No, still we could see only in the... PPT format. I'm putting only in the slideshow format. Okay, sir, you proceed, sir. Okay. okay I'll just put it in. Uh, I'm in uh, slideshow format only. So, as I said, even transportation of these digital equipments needs to be taken care in a very, very uh, spe uh, special care needs to be taken, putting it in non-static bags, making sure that nobody else, else is able to even access these devices remotely. All those uh, security measures has to be taken. Then once uh, the, these data are taken, then they have to start establishing what is the problem. Most common would we, what we do is we just don't take the primary evidence and start working on that. The normal process is to take a computer imaging of the computer media. We image the entire computer media and then work on the image file rather than the original evidence so that even in case there is something goes wrong, I still have my original medium where I can fall back. And to prove that both the image and the original is same, normally we use hash totaling and there are now even softwares which helps us to do this. So once we establish that both the hash of both the original as well as the image medium is same, then we start uh, analyzing the image medium rather than the original state. As I said, the process of creating an exact duplicate of the original evidence is imaging. 
and uh, there are as i said there are several software tools which helps us to do it i just mentioned supply of software names and uh, this copying is done basically at the sector level on a bit to bit stream copy of every part of the accessible area in your hard drive or whatever is your storage medium then the original file is moved to a secure storage area to prevent it at tampering and uh, as i said there are several softwares which help us to verify the hash totally once i have a clearance that both the hashes of both the files are the image and the original is same then we start going into analyzing okay the imaging is basically on the post part event but sometimes data are also volatile which means it's a live data which is actually happening uh so capturing a live data is much more uh, difficult than a uh say uh, what is stored in a hard disk or any storage medium uh you can start uh, capturing your online data in various forms one of the most common ways to go into the ram i know ram your data will be lost once a machine is powered down but there are processes or ways which even some of the ram data can be captured not all possibly yes but those uh, are just statically held in those data held in static statically in areas for longer periods in the ram are can be detectable and still be traceable and collected and as i said there are several software tools now which helps us to capture data from a live computer i have just given you a couple of uh, fast like nopix helix for pc then uh, fkt tools for uh, and or nks for commercial Im imaging if these data not only capture your live data but as i said it can even capture your uh, data or image it from the stored devices both are very very critical in your future investigation process mind you that these uh, softwares are some of it as are available free but some of it are quite expensive and uh, not all people will be having access to some of these tools then the main pro i can say the main part of this is after collecting the data imaging it then you have to start analyzing for the information which is stored in the data what you are going to do with it there are special tools which can help you to display the information in the data in the format which the user wants as i said there are several softwares which does it for us and typically we also do a manual review of the material on the media you can even review the window registry and uh, other informations etc a keyword search on topics of the crime all those things is possible once you get access into the data live or dead analysis again this comes into basically Uh, the earlier one pre even post even sort of thing live data is done analysis is done when the data is in the live on the system so say there is a computer attacks going on normally it does not leave any traces in your hardware it just uses your ram or other softwares and hackers exploit the information only in the computer memory so when this is uh, your attack is online or live we will be able to capture some of the data how the what has come in at what form is it where it is attacking so that it helps us prevent uh, in future how it can be solved or the attack can be prevented uh when the data is dead or rest that means it's basically a post mortem sort of a thing these data will be stored in your hard disk or other storage device then the we start analyzing the hardware and uh, then come into certain conclusions normally when we go into a crime scene to get a data or a computer a dead storage data we normally turn off all the computers or even the mobile phones so that these cannot be triggered uh, remotely as you have seen some persons might see in uh, movie shivaji there are digital time bombs once you log into it without a password your data gets erased so these are still been done in lot of western countries so 
people when they collect evidence should be very very careful that these are not uh, they do not allow such persons to enter your systems remotely the final say the part of it is going to be analyze after analysis you create a report create a report in such a way that it is easy to understand and it can be produced as an evidence in a law or a court of law the report can be either a written report or a oral testimony given in the court or it can be a part of both a combination so i know that was a sort of a more of a theoretical part of the digital forensics on the process what we need to follow going forward just pushing this theory part into the background i'll just go into some of the more relevant topics what we have computer forensics and mobile forensics say computer forensics again is a sort of it's a say a sub branch of your digital forensics where you use specialized techniques to recover authenticate and analyze a data electronic data in the computer you can create reconstruct uh, usage what has happened in the computer examine the residual data you can perform various technical analysis explain the features of the data and the usage most of thing in a computer or digital forensics are almost same there are some small methodology changes which uh, differentiate or some we do something a little different in a computer so as i said identifying preserving and presenting is common for all but only thing is in computer forensics you need to know the operating systems how the operating system works what are if there is any uh, effect on the operating system on your data or how it's stored where it's stored all those things have to be taken into account before you start working and also again preserving the integrity is one key factor which you will have to work where computer forensics are used normally used i again go to the fbi handbook of forensic services they are given a list of items this is not an inclusive all inclusive list it's just a, a sample list for you computer forensics is used to examine what type of data is in the computer it can compare data files to known documents or data files here basically even you can use uh, there are a lot of imaging software uh, i won't say imaging software uh, even your fingerprints can be compared to uh, digitally from to a known uh, data file base even facial recognition software are there you can uh, use a facial recognition software to find out a person in the system with any of your uh, criminal database these are things are used for comparison transaction when it happened what is the sequence what has it happened then uh, data file to be extracted uh, fbi also allows data to be extracted you can uh, are allowed to recover deleted data deleted data is where you find most of your informations especially in a forensic audit So most criminals to cover that track delete the data but a lot of times they don't realize deleted data can be recovered or even sometimes in a network printers even printers are can the data on your printers can also be used to find out what was the data which was printed so there are a lot of ways where people can look into where the data has moved the more creative the more knowledge on the computer you have the more creative you can get to retrieve data again a lot of time people use uh, the formats to hide their uh, files a word file can be for used in some other extension all those things are possible and people need to really find out how to bring out these files because the data are huge and if the formats change people normally tend to miss out these files keyword searching is one of the biggest tools most uh, law enforcement agencies use they put in certain keywords into a special software which tracks down all those keywords red flags it so that we can use find out what exactly happened to those things i'm not saying all red flags are uh, crimes but most of the crimes falls into those red flags you can use uh, fbi 
can has also mentioned that forensic persons can use password re recovery to softwares to open out passwords files computers de even decrypt certain files if it's encrypted and uh, there are uh, limited source codes can be analyzed storage medias uh, used in standalone word processes can be examined so these are some of the areas where fba has said that digital forensics or computer forensics is going to be used by them and uh, again as i said examples where computer forensics are mostly used is terrorism which everybody knows a lot of uh, things happens to the net even whatever what you want to build can be uh, got from the net frauds all types of frauds including banking fraud accounting fraud everything is can be used for and computer forensics can plays a major role in finding out homicide narcotics uh, hacking pedophilia which is nothing but child pornography all these things are there and uh, computer forensics can play a major role in identifying from where the source of the threat is so that uh, the law enforcement can take their actions to solve the crime or even prevent the crime in most cases next we move on to mobile forensics mobile forensics again as i said is a sub branch see mobile phones nowadays are everywhere it's a mini computer on a hand all sort of activities including financial activities my uh, banking trading whatever you have you have it can be done in through your mobiles what most people don't know is over a period of time these devices accumulate sizable amount of data and if you are able to recover these data then a lot of things can be said about what has happened how it has happened digitally mobile phones can as you can see in lot of movies nowadays you can use mobile phones to locate a source where the persons or criminals are there you can use your inbuilt gps or a location track where then use a cell phone towers etc to triangulate the source where those criminals or uh, location of the criminals or kidnappers are there so that the police can zero on them as i said most digital forensics is almost same for most of the uh, mobile forensics uh, process is almost same as your digital forensic process but especially as i said couple of small uh, aspects needs to be taken care one especially in password and pin a lot of mobiles if you enter your password uh, wrongly for three times it automatically locks you out so people have to be careful especially the persons the first responders to a crime scene they should ensure that they do not enter or play with the mobile phones or try to guess passwords as i said there are can be digital time bombs which can delete your uh, data and a uh, lot of times people even can remotely control your mobiles a lot of blackberry phones once a person takes uh, a blackberry phone as evidence normally what we do is switch off the radio mode so that no hacking is possible into the phone again for this to conduct mobile forensic to capture data analyze we have a number of softwares like cell track zurai cell desk oxygen these softwares are basically used so whenever we use we ensure that these software are tested before we use so this basically goes into the theory part of my presentation i have a couple of few more slides to just tell you how the digital crimes can take place some very very imaginative digital crimes steganography see this is basically a sort of things which has been used right even in world war 2 which was done in a say a book you take a Uh, particular characteristics of a book or uh, particular words of each this thing and then create a code so only the person who has the code can be able to find out the message this has now can be translated into even the digital medium and what in a digital medium can do is you can code inside a transport layer such as a document file or a image 
or even into a program or a protocol so that the outside of it you don't see anything but a person who has the knowledge those that is something can use those image to find out a code which is hidden in that why people a lot of people use this is it does not attract any attention on a face of it when i send the image nothing is no no doesn't attract any sort of a attention from any source or even any uh, uh, software which is tracking keywords or things i'll just give you a small uh, example to take an image I say it's a image of mona lisa which i have just given you your rgb code has specific numbers as most of you would be knowing so what happens if i change every 100 pixel one particular number your rgb code by one or two on the face of the image nothing is going to change the sub changes are going to be very subtle that no one is you will notice the change except the person intended user we then opens it and finds out these changes and using those changes he creates a code and finds out the message similar like this you can even attach any sorts of other programs with in the background of your fire uh, image this is also possible and uh, analyzing these images or finding out the crime or the code behind the these sort of a picture or documents is one of the major challenges because it's so subtle that on the face of it nobody will even recognize it there are luckily softwares as i said stig analyzer etc which does it but this is one area where people are using uh, these sorts of technologies or uh, methods to send out codes which is very very difficult even for the most advanced system now to find out and uh, next is password recovery most people have a problem it, this is not a just a ordinary uh, password which you lock into a computer or this thing what we are doing is taking some other else's data and trying to uh, access it so when i try to access into some other's data i should first have know that i am have a legal clearance i can enter into those persons then i can use various softwares as i said to enter password wrongly it can time out it can trigger a digital bomb it can the data can be locked forever lost forever so but there are software password uh, recovery or password cracking softwares like elkmo soft which recovers password for most of the documents used so a lot of such softwares are helping us to get into this next comes into the concept of email investigation as most not most everybody even school children nowadays have their own email accounts and uh, this is one area where uh, digital platform is used or abused at the to the most because people just look at it as a normal mail but there are a lot of crimes which are going in behind those things there can be even uh, threatening mails coming in there can be a lot of thefts so what happens is a lot of times a uh, lot of communications also takes place through emails a lot of criminals sends mails but deletes it not knowing that these can even be tracked back uh so a lot of and again emails can be used to profile people how the internet not only necessarily emails your facebook twitter instagram a lot of law enforcing agencies use these social media platforms to track or profile you profile a criminal uh we use basically emails to track header decoding ip addresses dynamic the ip address can be both dynamic yeah. or static and uh, uh, sir yeah. sorry for the interruption yeah. uh, the slides we are not able to see the current slide that you have been seeing sir no ma'am uh, and uh, uh, now only sir ah uh, now I, i was in the slide show mode i don't know yeah we, now, now only we are been there this okay. is the email investigation it yeah, is showing ah uh, okay sir, sir press f5 sir please f5 okay, okay. 
Yeah, it will come to the full screen. I was the full screen only. Uh, oh, for us, it is showing only from your. Uh, okay, sir. Now, no, please proceed. Okay. So, what uh, forensic investigator looks into emails? Basically, we go into the header for uh, header decoding. Sign what is your headers. We can track IP addresses where the mails are sent or mails are received, both static and dynamic. We can trace back the origins of the point of the email. If there is any harassment or whatever is happening, the original source can be identified and persons can be go there to find out what is exactly happening. I know IP addresses can be even dynamic, but it is even though it's difficult, we can start off to an extent find out where the message originates. And finally, coming into the legal framework, the Indian CRPC, the criminal procedures, has been amended to quite an extent that saying that even opinion of an electronic uh, or a digital forensic expert is considered as an evidence. Digital elect electronic evidences are allowed as an evidence. Electronic signatures are accepted. These are things which are earlier not there. Only because of these uh, amendments, these are now becoming uh, legally relevant. And most of you know there are uh, the special act called IT Act of 2008, Information Technology Act. This act actually basically sets forth various offenses under the system. It also says what are the offenses like destroying, deleting, altering, whatever I said earlier. And it also gives us the punishment on various counts. So. These are some of the, I can say, the tools which an investigator has to protect himself legally. And these are those acts or laws which we use to prosecute a digital criminal. Uh, before I just conclude on this, uh, there was a question saying that uh, one of the earlier madams were referring that people call, ask them for the password and all those things. Ma'am, all those things are not coming into the uh, form of a digital forensics. Those are basically people using to exploit the uh, knowledge of the, especially the old persons who do not have much knowledge on the digital processes, the digital systems, the digital payments, and bank call, and all those things. You see, most elderly persons, they just use the pin code to get, uh, retrieve money from ATM or all those stuff. So they just exploit it. Once you give your own pin number or whatever is your uh, password for a banking file, then or a credit card operations, then it, <laughs> per se, it becomes very, very difficult for the person or a investigator to find out from where that hacking has happened or because basically and everything happens with your password or a pin number. And if you're voluntarily sharing it either to first or without knowing it, it is it's very, very difficult to establish legally at a later stage, especially with your bankers saying that you have not done the transaction. But there are, yes, processes which can be found out, but uh, it's uh, very, very, on the face of it, a difficult proportion because you voluntarily or coercively has given your password or PIN, and uh, the bank will say we are not responsible for that. But again, on the flip side of it, a lot of people doesn't know is once you get into some sort of a fraud like this, or even sometimes your uh, through online your uh, accounts have been uh, money has been taken out from your account rba says that you have to give a complaint to your banker immediately once you give a complaint to your bankers immediately you are at least protected to a certain extent in the sense that the bank will have to repay you those amounts if you are able to prove it to them that it was taken out by a means of a fraud or a crime so whenever something like this happens Immediately go to your banker and file a, give them a complaint report saying that this has happened. And also, if there is uh, coercion involved, you might have to go to the police, the cybercrime division to give a complaint to them. But for all your normal uh, frauds or something like that, when people steal money or take a pin, the first thing is go to your banker, give a written complaint, get an acknowledgement from them. Or you can even, a lot of banks have a call center. And whenever, even when you go to a, give a complaint to a call center, ask them to give a complaint number. Each person will, each call, you can ask them for a complaint number. 
only when you get that complaint number it means that your call or your query has been registered so a lot of time a call center will say yes yes and they will not give you a number so insist that you get a number from the call center and also insist that you get a acknowledgement from the bank so once you get an acknowledge from the firm you are in a better footing although you have lost money or whatever happened you are in a better footing to get that money recovered rather than to lose it and uh, finally coming into this as long as there are people living there will be bad guys there will be crimes and uh, there is a continuous endeavor to bring them to justice when the world is turning digital the crimes have also turned digital and uh, one of the biggest tools what people in humanity has now is digital forensics especially to uh, trace track these crimes and then bring those people to justice see as you should all understand digital forensics as the word forensics is it's just not a sort of a movie this thing where you go gimmick do something the basic process is to gather evidence which is acceptable by a court of law so whatever is shown in the movie or uh, this thing is might be partially true might be not partially true but going into the system it takes a huge lot of time to track trace or on all those things as i said its prevention is always better than cure try to protect yourself as much as possible just as i am saying it for corona you protect yourself then if something happens we can use digital forensic to try to solve it so but on the face of it try to take all your precautions like your firewalls whatever it is even not sharing your passwords protecting your passwords etc then something happens then digital forensics can help you in a lot of way especially the law enforcement agencies to help find out the crime and solve the crime and bring people to justice i said this is a very very niche field very very few people are there in the indian context there are uh, actually i'll just also give there are certain uh, digitally certified labs in india which is approved by the government of india and which those labs are actually now the source of uh, these forensic investigation especially on the criminal side in the indian side even some big four companies the audit firms like deloitte kpmg and asnang they have their own forensic team but those are mostly they restricted to the accounting frauds or the banking frauds etc so but there is a huge scope in this especially in india as it's a growing as digital uh, uh, the world is turning digital the scope for the uh, digital crime has increased so much and the hence the scope for finding out and solving the crime is also increasing enormously so this is a very very niche field and uh, it will i'm sure it will expand or even explore in the future times to come and uh, might and uh, as i said the goal of this is not to teach you the tech, uh, the softwares which you use or the techniques to use but to just highlight or bring a taste of what is digital forensics so that if one Uh, any students get interested into these subjects can then go into the detailed courses on digital forensics and even create a career for him in india or even abroad so with this i thank once again for the opportunity given and if there is any question i'll try to answer it now. Um, anything else? Uh, uh, any questions, students?
So having any doubt, you can ask. No questions? Okay, Aditya Rajesh, you can continue. Yes, sir. We have come to the end of this wonderful session. On behalf of all the participants over here, I am happy to say that we all enjoyed it and feel very part of this session with the mob. Now I request Ravi Shankar Mahesh to deliver the vote of time. I request all the participants to stay connected until the end of the meeting. Okay, thank you, Aditya Rajesh. Good afternoon to all. I give a really heartfelt vote of thanks to our resource person, K. Ganesh, trainer, who spent his busiest time raising the occasion. Today we had the opportunity to hear your thoughts, sir, and this is definitely encouraging us. Starting what is the dig digital forensics, digital crime, that is how we are misusing the software, what is the reason to employ computer forensics, what are the measures to be taken, process to be followed, how digital evidence are collected, and about email investigation, etc. Thank you very much, sir. I would like to thank our... Honorable General Secretary and the Correspondent Sardar Manjit Singh Nair, sir, our Principal Dr. M. G. Raghunathan, sir, and Vice Principal Dr. N. C. Rajasri, madam, for the moral support, guidance, and motivation. I would like to thank our Dean Academic Dr. S. Savitri, ma'am, for her moral support and guidance. I would also like to thank our Dean IT, Mrs. S. Nirmala Devi, Madam, for her guidance to us in all our activities. My heartfelt thanks to all deans, HODs, and staff members of various departments for their moral support. I would like to thank all our students, volunteers, who have been running around doing a lot of things for this webinar. Finally, the wonderful participants who have turned up in such a great numbers, not only from our department, but also from other departments of the colleges. We thank you so much for your kind cooperation. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much to one and all. Students can leave the meet now. Okay, students, you can leave the meet now. So thank you so much, sir. It's a very ma'am. Uh, just uh, wait for very, the students to leave. Ah, yeah. Students, you can leave the meet now. Thank you, Aditya. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. 
Students can leave the meat mark. Uh, there's one professor called Dr. Manavalan, sir. Do you like to share any of your views, sir? Come on, Pope. Uh, I did some, some justice to the topic. No, sir, you have done a lot of justice, sir. It is really, we gained a lot of information, sir. Uh, especially from our digital side. Actually, I thought maybe you will be focusing more on your uh, finance side, but it was not like that. Really, a lot of information we gained from this. And especially the examples and all these things that you have given. Savitri, ma'am, would you like to give your comments? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I mean, I was just listening in and when sir said that, uh, no, no, it's not so easy to hack and all that, I said, okay, ma'am, I got not bad. It happened. It doesn't work. Okay. 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 Sir, it, it really, really opened up uh, our eyes to uh, what uh, it, it's all about. I mean, the process is not so simple as it, it seems. That is what I understood. So, uh, but anyway, it is really heartening to know. The world is a ba big, bad world. But well, there are good people here <laughs> who, who can help us keep safe. That is the main thing. But very interesting topic, sir. I'm, I'm sure if, uh, you know, when time permits and it's possible for you to come to college, when the college is back to near normalcy, we should have an extended session on this. Uh, sure really, we, we should also have to have this particular topic in our syllabus, ma. Yes, absolutely. You you bring it. We will we will just yeah. get it done. Simple. You just bring it, ma'am. Yeah, sure, ma'am. It, it was really, really very nice. Thank uh, you so much. As I said, it's a very huge topic. And my idea was just to give a taste to the students so that they can develop some interest and really go into the subject and learn what exactly digital forensics is. And as I said, most of the software are quite costly. It's not uh, easy to even buy. So it has to be done, uh, taken in a, I can say, a sort of, especially in India, where people don't spend money to, huge money to buy software for all these stuff. But yes, sir. I mean, there are softwares, there are processes available which can retrieve even a lot of things which people they don't know so even uh, yes, say desoldering I mean, a chip reballing a chip all those things day. are possible today was a working day and the number of people who must have attended would have been just about our students and maybe few outsiders this is something which everybody should practically know so which is why it should reach a wider audience and which is why we make a request that you will have a bigger session a longer session and a more interactive one thank you sir Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am.